What is up guys, welcome to Boomer Base. Today we're here to review the latest anime film here on Netflix called Baki Hanma vs Kengen Ashura, a very highly anticipated film for all Baki and Kengen Ashura fans. Now, was it great? Did it suck? Well, you'll find out here, but without further ado, let's get cracking. So welcome back to another anime review here on Boomer Base. Um, apparently my channel is done, you know, according to this comment, my channel's done, so I'm going to try to do my best to prove that it isn't. So thank you very much for that comment. I do appreciate all comments here on Boomer Base. To talk about this film, I am a big fan of Baki. I am sadly an only anime watcher, so I only know a few bits about manga stuff and things, but I'm mainly just an anime only. The same goes with Kengen Ashura, and despite their different animation styles, I think they're great. I am very much here for sort of turn off your brain, look at killer fighting scenes and you know choreography on the screen it's just you know it's what I like you know I like big big punch pretty much you know big punch big pow and when I heard that this was going to be a crossover film I was ecstatic you know I was like great I, this could be the best thing known to man from this point onwards I am going to talk about spoilers for the film so if you don't want to know about any spoilers by all means pause it come back later and things but you've been warned spoilers going forwards as a big fan of both the series I have watched them probably about two or three times sort of each you know I was really excited for this crossover just like any other sort of fan of these anime would be but I was utterly disappointed by not only the animation style the rush story and to be honest just the quality quality of the fights. Now, the film clocked in at just about an hour. I think it was like an hour and four minutes or something. So it was way too short. Like, I don't know why they thought that was a an okay idea, even if they are going to do like a part two and things. It should have been at least a sort of hour and a half, hour 50-ish, and should have packed in a lot more fights. Even the characters, to be honest, felt completely sort of odd that we had in, and they just kind of seemed like they were just fitted in to be like, oh, we need some Kengen Ashura characters, we'll just pop these guys in, or we just need some, you know, backy characters, let's just, you know, pop these in. You know, as a crossover movie, I didn't think this would even happen. You know, there's always, I see videos where it's like, could this guy from Baki be Kengen, etc. And it's always like, you know, speculation and things. But I never thought this would be like an actual film. Here we go. We got one. And despite it being sucky, I mean, we still got one, which is always a positive. I certainly think that Kengen fans overall will be disappointed in the quality of the fights. They're, they're really not very good. They're very quick. Like throughout the film, we have three fights. That's it. And they're not very fulfilling or anything like that i mean we have soy or saw point or pang or however you pronounce it i'll pop a picture anyway i'm gonna butcher names versus hanayama now before i go into any of these fights anyways for me that fight would just be easily won by hanayama without a doubt no questions asked you know fight twos uh ryan versus jack hanma now this is what I would consider to be maybe a bit more of a closer fight. The last one obviously was going to be Baki versus Oma, and to me Baki would absolutely just floor Oma without without a doubt, but we'll touch upon those momentarily. Now the different art styles do pop in and out throughout this film, but they just look off. They don't look well done. The the animation style for Baki is certainly not there and it's certainly not there for Kengen at all. I don't like that they tried to sort of mix it. I would have rather just sort of had like Baki animation style for the majority of it and then kind of like maybe go into the Kengen style for fighting maybe. Both animes as a whole have very unique art styles and they can't really be meshed together and they work well for their stories not in something that's to be brought together now one of the biggest upsets was that we had such a giant clickbait bait sort of title sequence that had so many different characters and you thought that we were going to get a lot more fights in there even if they were just going to be quick sort of snippet fights and you know some of their like people's favorite characters were going to be featured and then we only got the you know two and a half matches if you like the sort of there was a bunch of like infighting conflict between the Kengen and Baki things that didn't even result in fights the closest we got was like a stare down and an arm wrestle really wasn't very good um, the ending was very very anticlimactic and things which sucked greatly 
Now, the biggest thing that I did really like about this, not only is there hopefully going to be a part two, because obviously I would like some sort of clarification, you know, I will still watch the fights and I can still attempt to try and enjoy them, but the prison convicts were at the end. Now, that had me very sort of excited. Are they going to try, you know, jump into this in some way? I, I don't really know, but the prison convict arc, I really, really enjoyed. Like, that was some... That was some just great shit all around. So I'm very excited to see how they kind of fit into the mold. I thought they were only going to be sort of, you know, your one-off sort of prison convict arc special things. But if they're going to come back, I'm actually all here for that. Now, we'll go through the sort of... There were other characters that were dotted about. So we for, for Kengen, we had people like Adam Dudley, Imai Cosmo, Sekibayashi Jun, Kaolon Wongswat. Julius Reinhold, Kano Agito, and Hatsumi Ren, to just name a few. I think there was a couple of others and things like that, but, you know, they were just some of the, the main hitters that were popped around and things. I do think they missed out on a few characters that could have been put in, but, you know, I don't know what budget and things was like, so I don't know if that's all that they could manage. And then for Baki, we had people like Biscuit Olivier, we had Goki, Doppo Orochi, Kao Kaku, um, the old dude that fought Yujiro. I'll pop a picture as well. I'll be popping a picture for all of these people, to be honest. There's, you know, Seeking Retsu, Seeking Jaku, who randomly I think looks a bit like me, you know, you kind of see the resemblance and things, you know, you had Katsumi Orochi and then Chihara Shiba, who's the, you know, Haniyama's little henchman person and things, so like, some people dotted about and certainly even just some of those characters could have started fighting other characters from the, the different shows and we could have got something quite cool. Alas, we were disappointed, so now I'll go through the fights and sort of say my sort of two cents on them. Obviously, Saw Pong or Pang, however you pronounce that, versus Hanayama. I had no doubt in my eyes that Hanayama was going to absolutely clock the heck out of um, Soy Pang and things. And yeah, Hanayama won. Wasn't even close. You know, you've got to see some cool things with Soy Pang, you know, using his like extra hard like bones and stuff and whatnot. And, you know, he did some damage to Hanayama, but nothing in me thought that Hanayama was going to remotely lose. If he lost, I'd have been furious, especially as that was the first fight. You know, we go into fight two we got Ryan versus Jack. Now, this is one that I was like, damn, this could be actually a pretty cool fight. It didn't even last too long as well, which kind of sucked. And, you know, poor Jack. Every time I see this man, he gets done dirty every time. He's always losing despite trying to put his body through such extreme things to just better himself and just become stronger. But I think the removal for Ryan, or Ryan, however I'm pronouncing it, is just a bit too OP. Like, Jack tried to do something kind of similar where he just, like, threw up a load and made his body ultra thin, I think, to keep up with speed. And then just towards the end, just fucking Pickle comes in and just, like, stops the fight. And, you know, Baki and Oma have to get involved. And it was just like, why? Why? Just, we didn't, we didn't need that at all. What the hell was Pickle doing here? Like, disappear. Like, was not happy about that. Like, because like, like, they were going real hard. Like, Jack was, like, biting Ryan and taking, like, chunks out of him. I think Jack was still going to lose, but they were going to probably keep going until they killed themselves. Because, you know, they tried to pick characters that would do well against each other and kind of were similar, you know, and things. And the final fight was Baki versus Oma. Again, Baki in no remote, in my eyes, should lose this fight. He is far better than Kengen, than Oma. Afraid that's just my two sense if you don't agree that's absolutely fine but for the people that Baki's fought he absolutely trumps Oma without a doubt you know now it was definitely cool to see like the Nico style and then to see this sort of advanced come through and things and obviously Baki was doing a bunch of you know practice things he did a really cool sort of like muck punch where like a jet thing came out and you know was doing some of the similar things he was doing with like pickle and things like that but then lo and behold you know Yujiro and Gensai come out and you know fight stops and all this type of bollocks and you know, there's pretty much going to be a part two where I think it's going to be Gensai and Oma versus Yujiro and Baki, in which, without a doubt at all, Yujiro should just win that as a whole. You know, obviously Yujiro and Baki have had their kind of fight and, you know, Baki was the victor in things, but Yujiro's won more times over as a whole and things, but Yujiro just claps all of them. Probably Baki might even clap Gensai. I don't know. I personally don't think the Kengen verse, at least to the point where this kind of takes place, is of the same level or even close to, to Baki, bar like a few characters. Obviously Gensai's crazy nuts and probably um, maybe Agito and Hatsumi Sen might be some like cool characters amongst the sort of the fold, but you know, Adam Dudley, he's nowhere near there. Well, as much as I love Sekabi Ashi Jun, he's just not there either. So that kind of sucks, but you know, then we had the, you know, 
the prison convicts at the end and that's something I am here for and interested in but overall a really big disappointment and I'm sorry to say it's probably something I wouldn't recommend like if you got a spare hour maybe pop it on but it was just quite unfortunate that that happened and it is sad that it has happened but hey ho you know I can never complain about more anime content as a whole so I'll take that I'll take that as a small win from it but thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And then tune in to a, another movie review here on Boomer Base. Take care now. Bye-bye. Hey, thank you for watching the video. Click the button to keep watching or click the other video for more videos. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.